In this video, we'll look at how to create a drum part using step sequencing. Let's start out by clearing this groove so we can begin from scratch. Open the menu and select Reset Groove. The next thing we need to do is load up some basic drum sounds. Click on Drum Part 1 to bring it into focus. And notice that selecting a drum part brought the sample editor into view. Click in the program window and then pick out a kick drum. Now let's say you just want to lay down a basic beat for the kick drum, one that has a drum hit on every downbeat. You can do this a couple of different ways. First, you can click the edit button or hold down the control key on the computer to enter edit mode. Then, click on the beats where you want the kick drum to play. In this case, those beats are 1, 5, 9, and 13. Have a listen. Another option is to right click anywhere on the trigger buttons and open the sequencer view, like this. Here you can see all eight drum parts from top to bottom and all eight bars from left to right. And within each bar you can see 16 steps. If you look at bar 1 you'll see the four drum hits we just entered. And in this top area you can call up a variety of controllers. First, let's enter another four kick drum hits to make this pattern two bars long. Now, click back on the main panel and the sequencer window hides automatically. Let's add a snare drum. First, we need to assign a sample to snare drum 1 by selecting it and then assigning a sample. Let's use club snare 1 to keep it consistent and test the sound. Okay, this time let's start by calling up the sequencer again and now simply click everywhere you want a snare drum to go. Let's see how it sounds. Great. It's not likely to go triple platinum, but the point here is how to use the controls. Let me show you how to use the controller area at the top. Start by clicking back to the main control panel. Now let's say we want to make the bass drum pan left to right on every other beat. Right click the pan control. This does two things. It automatically reopens the sequencer window, and you can see that it called up pan in the control area. Notice along the left hand side that BD1 is highlighted. This is to remind us that bass drum 1 is the part in focus. However, you can click on any of these part names to hear them. Up top you can see that Groove Machine automatically placed a control column over every note. Now all you have to do is click and drag the green bars to adjust the parameter for that step. This is just a small example of the per step editing capability of Groove Machine. We go over per step editing in detail in another video. Since we want the bass drum to jump from left to right, I'm going to pull the first bar down and push the second bar up, and so on. Now let's use the play button here at the bottom of the sequencer window and have a listen. Very cool. By the way, these orange lines extending out of each note, they represent the note's duration or length. Groove Machine will automatically play any bars that have note data in them and then loop back to the beginning. Let's say you like this beat, but you want to build it out to a full eight bars. No problem. Click the window that says bar one to select it. Now come down to the bottom and click copy. Then highlight bar three and click paste. And you can see that Groove Machine automatically copied all of the controller information too. Now if I want some variety, I can add more notes to the new bars without affecting the original. Finally, try loading up one of the factory grooves and opening the sequencer. This is a great way to learn how the different rhythms were put together. For more great software, visit the ImageLine online shop. And for more great tutorials, visit StreamWorksAudio.com.